Hi, welcome back to Dr. Neil's Notes. In this video, we're going to build a .NET web server. Now, I'm going to do it on a Raspberry Pi, but this code that we're going to go through today can be run on any platform that supports .NET 6. You can find a set of notes that accompany this in neilsnotes.net and if you look through neilsnotes.net and look for .NET web server on Raspberry Pi, this will provide the instructions that I'm going to go through now in this video. You can follow along with these instructions uh, on the web page or you can just follow along on the video. Of course, you can pause any time to try and catch up. And that's the great thing about video is you can rewind too. So we're going to build a web server. I'm going to do it on a Raspberry Pi to prove that it's possible. Uh, but you can do this on any platform you like that supports .NET 6. So that's Windows, Mac, Linux. Let's get started by heading over to the Raspberry Pi and let's get coding. Open the terminal. I will zoom in to make it easier to see. And let's go to where we are going to do our coding and if you followed the previous videos you know I have a dev folder in my documents folder where I keep all my projects and you'll see the previous projects that we have been building there so we can create a new folder in here for this new project um, so we can do make dire to make the directory that we want and I'm going to call it .NET Pi Server. And then we can go into that direct change directory to that directory. So cd .NET Pi Server. Great. And then up until now in all the previous videos when we've wanted to create a new project, we've always been creating console projects. And so we've done .NET New Console. Well, to create a new web project, guess what? We just do .NET new web. And this will now create the template that we need for a web project. And we can have a look at what it's created here. It's created some app settings files, one for development and one for, well, maybe for production. We'll see where we go with that. Uh, a project file, uh, a program file that's got most of the code that we're going to care about right now and something that helps us determine how we're going to launch this uh, mostly again for debugging or testing um, and in the obj folder it's already set up some things to help us with package management so let's open this in visual studio code so i'm going to type code dot so space dot and that will open code in this folder And now we've got Visual Studio Code open and we can have a look and see the files we were just looking at in the terminal. Before we build any code or look at the code even, we can open the terminal in Visual Studio Code and .NET run the web server, web application, that we just created. So you can see this is building now and it should create the bin folder with everything working in it and then you can see it's now hosting this on HTTPS localhost that's the local machine in this case the Raspberry Pi on port 7015 or it just HTTP with no security so no uh, HTTPS on localhost 5179 and we can try clicking on this link to follow it and open it in a local browser 
and you can see here the browser is localhost 5179 which is the non-secure version and it's outputting hello world which is a lot like the console first console application that we created and the template that dotnet gives you for the console application just outputs hello world on the console now we're outputting hello world on a web page so let's have a look at how this is being built if we go back to visual studio and have a look at the program file you can see that it's a little bit more code than in the console we're creating a web application and actually we're taking in some arguments or parameters that are passed into the command line which right now is fairly limited we're building that application we're then mapping the get of the root folder in our web location to just output hello world and then we run so there's a lot of work happening behind the scenes for us but this is the core of a dotnet 6 web application so to stop this web application we can go to the terminal in visual studio code and press Control c and it shuts down the application now this is kind of cool but a web server or web application is only really useful if you can access it from another machine so in order to access it from another machine we need to somehow expose the url from the work we're doing in this case on a raspberry pi on the machine that we're doing development on to be accessible on another machine so if you type well i'm on a raspberry pi so a linux box if you type hostname it'll tell me what my ip address is on a windows machine in terminal you might just type ip config and it will tell you uh, what your local ip address is so here I'm 192.168.1.154. Okay, that's kind of cool. But how does that help me? Well, if I use .NET Run, I can set up the URLs I want to support for this web server. So I could do HTTP 192.168.1.154. And then I can also specify the port I want, so I could say 8080. So if I run this now, it should run same as it did before, but now you can see it's listening only on this port 192.168.1.154.8080. So if I head over to my Windows machine and try and access that URL, so HTTP, I'm going to do this and then I'll bring it onto the screen, 192.168.1.154. Let me swap over to my Windows 10 machine. Here we go, and bring in a browser window. Now I'm going to need to do 8080 as the port, and it's just HTTP. And there we are. So now we're accessing from a different machine the Hello World web server that's running on my Raspberry Pi, and I'm accessing it from a Windows 10 machine in this case. But of course, this should work from any other machine that you've got on your local network. So you could even do it from a phone or a tablet, um, and you could do it from a Mac or any other machine that you have that has a browser on it. You can access that um, URL or that IP address and that port, and that'll get us back to displaying that page. Okay, great. So let's go back to the Raspberry Pi and we can 
stop running the web server with control C again. So to change what we're outputting, you could imagine it would be quite simple to replace this, for example, with a method that's something like get page content. And then down here we could write a method that returns a string called get page content. And in here we could return any string that we wanted. And in fact, we could even, if you watched the console animations where I was doing a little bit of ASCII art, you could uh, create some ASCII art to put on your web page. So let me just skip ahead and uh, do that. So here we go with the magic of video. Um, we now have the ASCII art for the rocket that I created in the original console animations uh, note that's in an earlier video. And so now if we save this and run, it's now running and I can go to that address and there's my rocket being displayed on my web page. Kind of cool, but maybe not exactly modern web application, but we're starting to get the idea of how this works. Now, most of the web is created using HTML uh, and not using text like this. So let's just stop this web server and we're gonna create in our Pi server a new folder called www World Wide Web root and that's going to be the place we're going to put our HTML files to display on this website. So in this folder let's create index.html so a new file called index.html and we're going to start writing some HTML in this file. So, whoops, the document type is HTML. We're going to start with the HTML tag. And the great thing about Visual Studio Code is it's now finishing and closing my tags for me as well. So, when I open a tag, it closes a tag. Let's create a, a, a head. And that's going to be the place that we define the title. And the title is what gets displayed at the top of your browser. So in here, we could put, I'm running on a Raspberry Pi, so I could put my Pi server home. Cool. And then what actually gets displayed in the page is the body, the body of your page, the contents, and we can put a heading in that body, and in our heading we could put something like, welcome to the Pi server, powered by .NET 6. Cool. So, We've created our HTML page. How are we going to get this HTML page to get rendered instead of the text that we have in our program? So just make sure you save your HTML page. Then go back to the program. And let's get rid of this method. That doesn't seem like that's how we want to do things. Let's get rid of this notification too. And instead of this mapping for getting page content. Let's get rid of that. And once we've built the app, we're going to say app, and then we're going to say use default files. Now use default files will tell it to look in the default location, which is www root, for files. And we'll say the app also has static content. So we'll say uh, static, use static 
files. And now if we go back and run this again, this time when it builds it should pick up that the code has changed and we're going to uh, be displaying the HTML from our index page. So let's hope this works and we'll go to our browser and look at that. So the title Pi Server Home is now displayed in our Chromium window and the heading Welcome to Pi Server powered by .NET 6 displayed as contents on our page. Often on a web page you want to display quite a lot more than just some text which is cool and so let's explore how we could display a video on our page so there's a great site called file samples and if you go to filesamples.com formats mp4 you can find a whole bunch of sample files and I'm just going to download a reasonably small one just so that it's quick to download there we go it's downloaded so let's take this file, this file this video file and copy and paste it into our web server so we're going to let's just cut that go to where our web server is which is in .NET Pi server we're going to put it as content here so let's paste it in here so now if we close this and minimize this we should see there's our sample video next to the index HTML page and then we're going to go back to our index HTML page and in the body we can put a video tag and the video tag typically you want to put some attributes so it knows what to display and we'll just do uh, 640 by 360 for now we will define that we have autoplay so that as soon as the page um, opens it will autoplay and we'll also enable controls so playback controls on the video and then we need to define where that video is coming from so the source of the video and um, we'll say it is what is it called sample whoops sample underscore 640 by 360 dot mp4 okay great so that's where it's coming from and then we should also specify the type and the type is uh, video mp4 and this gives a clue to the browser what to do with this video or how to render this video so now we've got uh, a video being displayed on our web page let's see what that looks like let's just make sure everything is saved um, go back and rerun our web page or our web server the web application that we're building um, go back to our browser refresh the page that we're on and look at that we now have a video being rendered along with controls on the page um, we can do all the things that you'd expect to be able to do you can go full screen uh, and you've got some playback speed some download picture in picture type controls which is kind of nice and this is all given to us by HTML5 out of the box we have now a video playing on the web page on a web server that we created on a Raspberry Pi all in under 30 minutes and that's really all I wanted to show today and of course your creativity can now take over and you can start thinking about 
the different things that you could do running your um, web server, what you kind of things you want to render. Uh, you can render video, obviously, you can render images, you can render graphics, and you can do all of this on a very small, lightweight device like a Raspberry Pi, and of course you can do it on a Mac, on Windows, and on Linux. Thanks for joining me today on this little adventure through building a web server on a Raspberry Pi. As I've already said, we'll work on any platform that supports .NET 6, and it really shows the power of .NET 6 to build very small, lightweight web servers. I hope you learned something, uh, and I hope you'll join me again for future videos where we'll carry on exploring what else we can do with .NET 6 on a Raspberry Pi. Thanks for watching. Bye.